In 2021, I made a video about the top 5 cars you must drive on iRacing. This could be because they were a brilliant challenge to drive, had some amusing characteristics, or were just a bit of an oddball car that many people on the sim tended to look over. Since then, several new cars have been added to the sim, many of which I do rate very highly, so I thought I'd make an updated list two years on with some of these new inclusions factored into the list. In my last video, the McLaren MP430 Formula 1 car and the Legends 34 Coupe were cars that I put into my top 5, however, as of this video, I've decided to knock them out in favour of other choices. I'm even slightly cheating as my list is technically 6 cars long, but I'll explain why later in the video. First off though, it wouldn't be a proper list without some honourable mentions. Kicking off these cars is the Toyota GR86 which is free content on the sim. This is a far more fun rookie car than the MX-5 in my opinion and has more value too. It teaches you far better principles than the Mazda does with how you have to attack the brakes into slow corners and you learn to use the weight transfer and body roll of the car to your advantage to get lap speed out of it which will be a crucial skill when it comes time for GT cars. The late model stock is another honourable mention and this is by far one of the most enjoyable oval cars I've ever driven. Honestly, it's even more fun again on the road courses. I would be fully behind it if these cars had a road series to race in and oh, just a side note on this car, holy cow, what a sound it makes! My final honourable mention is the iRacing Dirt Midget and to be totally honest with you all, I'm just using this section of the video to tell you guys to go drive this thing around a rallycross track. It is wild fun that will have you giggling like a schoolgirl for hours on end. But hey, look, let's crack on with our actual list. And as you've probably already figured out based on the thumbnail of this video, our first car goes to the bonkers fast Mercedes AMG W12 E Performance. This is the 2021 Formula 1 Constructors winning car and it's not hard to see why. This car will warp your perception of how fast a racing car can be. The downforce levels are out of this world and it will take countless laps to build the confidence to push this car to its true potential. More concerning than that though is just how compliant and easy to drive this car is. It's exceptionally forgiving over bumps and aggressive curbs and surprisingly not too difficult to catch in an oversteer moment so long as you have quick enough reactions and don't stall out the rear wing. Mercedes W12 is a must try for all Iris and competitors regardless of your thoughts on open wheel cars. This is the car I put in place of the McLaren MP430 and if you do decide to complete a back to back comparison of these two cars, I think you'll see why I chose the Mercedes. It is truly in a league of its own, even compared to the newer W13 Mercedes on the sim, which just feels sluggish in comparison. The second car to make my list today is the Aston Martin DBR9 GT1 car, which does survive yet again on the top 5 list after featuring in my last one. Since that video, the car hasn't seen too many updates, so much of what I said about the car still rings true. It has a glorious noise from its 6 litre V12 and is a proper driver's car. It does feature traction control, but whether you turn this off or not, it will test you as a driver in a big way. Requiring manual blips on the downshifts with a sequential shifter, this car will have you sweating when pushing hard with its weighty steering that requires a lot of finesse. GT1 is one of the best categories of racing ever in my opinion and whilst we don't have my personal favourite Maserati MC12 GT1 car on the iRacing sim, this Aston Martin still does a fantastic job at giving us an insight into what kind of craziness that era of GT racing had before it all got a little bit tame with the GT3 cars. Go on internet, fight me, GT3 cars are overrated. For those that haven't tried the car yet, be prepared for a battle against the Aston with its low tolerance to curbs and bumps. It is a car that will fight you at almost every twist and turn, but that's why I think the car is so brilliant because when it comes together, they don't get much more rewarding than this. In my last video, I also featured the Audi 90 GTO which I still stand by to this day. However, this is where I extend the list to 6 cars. Rather than just having the Audi in this spot on the list, I want to extend this now to the entire Camel GT class. 
The Nissan GTP ZXT prototype is a space shuttle on wheels with a turbocharged V6 spitting out almost 800 horsepower on a fragile chassis weighing 950 kilograms. The Nissan features far worse turbo lag than the Audi which, when paired with rear-wheel drive, means a meticulous touch is needed out of every corner no matter how fast or slow the bend may be. My best advice when driving this car is to also ensure you wear ballerina shoes because they would be more appropriate than racing boots. Requiring a manual throttle blip on the upshifts and manual throttle blips on the downshifts, this car will keep your feet very busy. Many of the top drivers in this car on the sim tend to just do a full heel and toe downshift approach thanks to the car's already fragile gearbox, so when driving this car be prepared to unleash your inner Shane van Gisbergen. Featuring a pretty significant amount of downforce by the late 80 standards, this car will set some of the quickest lap times of any car on the entire iRacing service, but it won't be easy to achieve those laps consistently as the car does have a tendency to delete its driver from existence at the slightest misinput. Number 4 on this list goes to the Porsche 992 Cup car which shouldn't surprise those who know me. I love this car and have spent much of my time on iRacing racing these Porsche Cup cars. The reason for the 991 Cup car not making my list in the last video came down to the horrendous differential locking the car developed in the later updates, but now with the new 992, these issues are gone entirely. With no assists, the Porsche Cup car is a harder to drive GT3 with less downforce. The engine on this particular model is shifted further into the middle of the car than the previous generation Cup car, so it doesn't feature the horrific on throttle understeer and pendulum style snap oversteer often associated with Porsche road cars. However, you'll still need to be wary when driving this car of where the weight is as you need to be quite gentle with the inputs to not pitch the car too aggressively under brakes. A significant factor in me choosing this car for the list as well is that it has been said by many drivers that if you ignore the few exploits that have been found with tyre heat and pressure in this car, the 992 Cup car has one of the better feeling tyre models of any car on the simulator with the flex and bite of the tyre being more pronounced and noticeable than most other cars on new tyre model 7. The racing this car produces is also excellent as proven by the tag queer Porsche eSports Super Cup with Slipstream Fest being a common occurrence so do not worry for even a second about the field getting too spread out in these gorgeous cars. The final car on this list goes to another repeat from last time but it's just too good to not be included. The Dallara IR18 IndyCar is so much fun on iRacing that Motorsport Games had to put a stop to it. The force feedback on this car is considerably better than any other car in iRacing and delivers an unparalleled feel of what the car's chassis is doing at all stages of the corner. The car is wild fun with plenty of power underneath you and a great strategic element on road courses with a push to pass system allowing you to get the upper edge on your competitors. Featuring two tyre compounds as well, the car also lends itself well to more strategy than almost any other car on the iRacing service and hey, it gets some bonus points for having a fully animated pit crew too. The car is, of course, used on both road courses and ovals, so if you do end up specialising in this car, you have a great chance of getting a high I rating in not just one, but two licensed categories. So that's my new top 5 as of this year. What do you guys think? Do you agree or do you disagree with some of my decisions? Let me know down in the comments below and we'll argue about it in true YouTube comment section fashion. Or we could have a fun debate. Up to you. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the following video.